Hey, this is Matthew from Tomopop.com. Now, typically when I do reviews, they're about mixed martial arts or sometimes pro wrestling figures. But the focus on Tomopop is usually collectible vinyls. Now, I know there's fans out there of MMA and vinyl, but there's not really much out there for those kinds of people to collect. Now, today, I think I found a way to bridge the gap for those collectors, and that would be with these guys right here. These are the UFC Ultimate Collector Series Wave 2, made by Round 5 MMA, a Canadian-based company that's been producing these figures since about 2007. Now this is our first time actually taking a look at these guys, so fasten your seatbelts and glove up. It's time to take a look at Round 5 UFC Ultimate Collector Figures Wave 2. But first, let's take a look at the packaging of the figures. Each figure is packaged in a sealed plastic casing with a clear look at the front and one side of the fighter. The packaging is very durable and should make mint on card collectors very pleased since this thing is sturdy and will not bend easily, since as I said, it's all plastic. The front has a photo of the fighter, in this case being the Huntington Beach bad boy Tito Ortiz, and the graphics on the box have a hardened fighting feel of them with a gray, concrete, and industrial metal background. This item also carries the official UFC holographic seal, which means this is a licensed and approved product from Zufa. Now you may have noticed that the packaging inside there has a really big fact sheet, and I'm going to give you guys a little closer look at that right now. This is both sides of it. This is the front side. Over here would be, of course, where the figure will be blocking it. And this information here is actually stats, like camp, nickname, that kind of stuff. And of course you have pictures over here. And as you saw already on the back, we have the figure once again, and the rest of the figures in this lineup. And interestingly enough, this changes depending on which figure is being spotlighted on the actual toy you just bought. Pretty cool to look at. Alright, so that's the packaging. Now let's rip into these guys and take a look at them out of the box. The figures in this line include Tito Ortiz, Kimbo Slice, Michael Bisping, Forrest Griffin, Randy Couture, and BJ Penn, each one standing at around 5 inches tall. The first thing I immediately noticed is the level of detail when it comes to the faces. I collected a few of these early figures from years ago when they first started the lines, and they were drastically different looking. Those figures were more cartoonish, while these are more caricatures based in reality. These are much more recognizable to their real-life counterparts. Many in the MMA world were critical of their appearance, especially after seeing early prototype pictures of this wave, but those photos just simply didn't do these figures any justice at all. They are much better looking in real life, and I hope this video can show that to you viewers at home. Remember, these figures are hand sculpted and not real scanned like other sports collectibles for UFC are, and having them made uniquely like this allows for, what I think anyway, is a better image, since here you get an idealized version of the fighter as opposed to just scanning them, which oftentimes will take them out of context, if you will, and lacks the heart and emotion of the fighter that you get from these figures. While we're on the subject of mentioning Jack Specific, who is the rival to Round 5, while that company recycles bodies, Round 5 sculpts each body specific to the fighter, allowing for more customization. The older lines were once again very cartoonish and had hard-looking muscles, but these new waves are more organic and human-looking while maintaining the exaggerated cartoon feel. Unlike the Jack specific UFC figures, these fighters don't have event-specific shorts in this line, but what they do have is detailed sponsors and logos on them. The difference being that the shorts are smooth here, whereas most of the Jack specific figures are often a rougher textured surface, making printing oftentimes very difficult on the body. Here, the logos are all very bright and large and add to the figure's authenticity. As far as price point goes, these figures are very affordable, especially in the world of other vinyl collectibles. You can typically find these figures for around $10 to $15 for most toy websites. The Jack specific UFC figures, to put this in perspective, are typically around that price, although sometimes they can be about $20 to $25, depending on who they are. I think the Round 5 figures are a great value, though, and make an excellent addition to a hardcore mixed martial arts fan or a vinyl collector, whether they're new in the game or have been a long-time buyer. Okay, now that you've seen the figures standing alone, let's compare them to some of the previous Round 5 figures, as well as their competitor slash partner, Jack Specific. First up, let's take a look at an older Round 5 figure. In this case, Randy Couture from the very first wave of Round 5's figures. As I mentioned before, these figures had a totally different feel to them, and it's very clear when you see them side by side. Something else to note was how the older figures were posed. Most of them were very hard to keep standing upright, and over time, Round 5 was able to figure out how to actually balance them better. The facial sculpts are miles apart, and it shows you how much the company has really improved since they first began. Now let's take a look at Round 5 against Jack's specific UFC figures. Aside from the size difference, the Jack's figures have a lot of articulation points, while the Round 5 figures do not have as much, namely since they are intended for two different markets. For what it's worth, I think the likeness is much better on the Round 5 figure, since as I mentioned before, it captures the feel of the fighter in an idealized way, more than just scanning someone's face and taking it as is. 
The paint is consistent on the round 5 figure, and the chest hair is also far more detailed, which when it comes to Forrest Griffin is very important. Michael Bisping is also in this line, and he seems to have a difficult face to capture in plastic form. Nonetheless, round 5 takes this one too, capturing the smugness of Bisping, as opposed to Jax, who made him look more like a depressed Steve Carell from The Office. Overall, I prefer the look of the round 5 figures, and will have these figures displayed on my shelves, while the Jax ones will be stuffed in their cage in a pile somewhere. So, what's the final verdict on UFC Ultimate Collector Series Wave 2? Well, I'd have to say that these guys are pretty awesome. You know, I collected these figures when the first wave came out, and they were okay. Back then, a lot of people used to complain how they didn't look anything like the person they were supposed to. That problem has been completely resolved here and better. I think the likeness is probably some of the best we've seen in any mixed martial arts collectible out there, including the UFC Jack Specific action figures. And speaking of that old original series, these figures have come a long way since those days, as far as producing quality figures and figuring out what worked and what didn't work. And what they're doing now is definitely working for me, and I'm sure plenty of other collectors out there. So if you see any of these figures in any toy stores near you, and you're a fan of MMA and vinyl, this is absolutely a must-buy for you. Again, this is Matthew from TomoPop.com. Thanks for watching.